This animation is intended to illustrate the use of the B3-bit file in tracking or monitoring program status during execution. We will examine the use of bit file status flags in a simple silo or hopper application. We will start by examining the I.O. mapping for the silo environment. Bit 0 of input rack 1 is connected to a normally open push button used to start the silo application. A normally closed push button used to stop the application is connected to bit 1 of the I1 input rack. In this application, a proximity sensor is being used to detect the arrival of a container at the filling station. This proximity sensor is connected to input rack 1, bit 3. A level sensor is connected to input rack 1, bit 4, and is used to detect when a container has been filled to the desired level. The motor used to drive the conveyor in this application is connected to output rack 2, bit 0. Lastly, we have a solenoid valve used to open and close the hopper, which is connected to bit 1 of output rack 2. It's time for us to move on and examine the program used to run the silo application. Here we have the cycle of events for the application. A container is brought to the filling station, the solenoid valve is opened, the container is filled to the desired level, and then the container is removed. The cycle is then repeated. The first rung of the program for this application is a standard seal-in rung which uses bit address B30-0 for the holding bit. The balance of the application is divided into two sections. One section is devoted to detecting desired status in the program. The other section is used to control the state of the outputs in the application. The first status flag is set on rung 1 and is used to advise when the box is in position and ready to be filled. We will use the bit file address B30-1 for this status flag. The setting of this status flag is dependent upon three conditions. First, the motor cannot be running. Second, the proximity sensor must detect a container at the fill station. And lastly, the level sensor must not be tripped, indicating that the box has not already been filled. A second status flag is used to advise when the box has been filled to the desired level. This status flag is using the bit file address B30-2. Rung 2 latches the B30-2 bit file status flag when the level sensor is triggered indicating that a container has been filled to the desired level. The B30-2 full box status flag is unlatched on rung 3 when the full box moves beyond the proximity detector. The last section of the silo program consists of two rungs which are being used to control the outputs of the application. One rung is used to control the conveyor motor which brings boxes to and carries boxes from the filling station. The other output rung controls the solenoid valve. We have included B30-0 contacts on each of these output rungs. This has been done to ensure that continuity is interrupted if the seal-in circuit is broken. This would occur when the stop button is pushed. The motor output is on rung 4 and is energized if either the proximity sensor is not active or if the box full status flag is set. In both these situations we want the conveyor to advance. The solenoid is energized by rung 5 and is only dependent upon the fill box status flag, which advises when the box is in position and not already full. We will now examine the events and status for a single cycle of the application. Here we have the program loaded and it is running. When the start button, associated with input rack 1 bit 0, is pressed, the seal-in circuit locks up on rung 0, and the CR1 contacts on rungs 1, 4, and 5 close as they are associated with the B3-0-0 holding bit. 
In addition, the NC contact associated with the proximity sensor is still closed. This provides continuity on rung 4, and the conveyor motor starts bringing a box forward to the filling station. The proximity sensor, when triggered by the arrival of the box, causes the NC contact on rung 4 to open, and thus the conveyor motor is stopped. The proximity sensor also causes the NO contact on rung 1 to close. This, in turn, sets the fill box flag. When the fill box flag contact on rung 5 closes, the solenoid valve is energized, and as a result, the box begins to fill. Once the box is full, the level sensor is triggered, causing the box full flag to be set on rung 2. This change in state of the level sensor input also causes the fill box flag to be reset on rung 1. As a result, the fill box contact on rung 5 opens. This causes the solenoid to be de-energized. The latching of the box full flag causes the closure of the rung 4 NO contact, which in turn restarts the conveyor motor. As the box passes the proximity sensor, the contacts associated with it return to their rest state, and the box full flag is unlatched. The conveyor will now bring the next box to the fill station, and the entire cycle will be repeated.